afternoon antenna fans, nothing on the air except 18079 juicy DX pileup. There's an atoll in the Pacific that's on the air. That's CW. Uh, topic here, the reason for making the M-Fed quarter wave is to do experiments, not for an antenna. It isn't worth a crap for an antenna. The point is to isolate one wire of a dipole and get it down towards ground level to be able to get my hands on it and play with it. And the point of these tests in this diagram was field strength measurements between the coax around the network and the antenna wire. And this shows some real interesting things. Firstly, there was a significant mismatch between the coax and the matching network. I would guess about two to one. Now note the wire is a quarter wave long. Not the wrong value from the old textbooks of this half sine wave shape on a half wavelength wire. It doesn't work that way. The half sine wave shape is had from a quarter wave wire. And I'll explain what that is in a bit. This won't match. This matches perfectly. Bottom dark line, square thing on the left, hump on the right, was the indicated field strength. Pretty much nothing around the matching network. It's not shielded. The half sine wave shaped hump centered on the antenna wire. Uh, not extremely strong, but measurable. Tremendous field strength. Just pegged the meter needle between the coax and the ground. What's going on there? Well, see, when there's a mismatch, according to an engineering course document from the University of Oslo in Norway, the coax loses its self-shielding properties and it exposes the center conductor. And it starts spewing fields, big time fields between the line and the ground. And the matching network became sensitive to it. Those very strong fields from the coax to the ground don't do anything except cause losses. Here is the top view of this system and it goes out one wavelength roughly away from the antenna with a field strength meter and there's nothing indicated from the transmission line. Here's this shape that's being so-called radiated from the antenna wire. There's a half sine wave shape that the classical textbooks, which are wrong, say fits on a half wave wire. It does not. The reason for that is <clears throat> that this is the emission pattern that's a result of how the antenna function works. The antenna does not emit energy because of current flow along that wire. That's an old myth. It emits energy because charges go out and fields go out to the end of that wire and they turn around and reflect and when those two directions collide there's the emission and I cited proof of that in the paper I just filed with IEEE we'll see if they publish it but this business of a uh, halfway event fed is absolutely wrong perfectly working dipole each arm is a quarter wave long not a half this uh, long wire is the same myth as as a myth of that higher is better. These are ignorant compensation mechanisms that say that just more is better. More isn't. Correct matching and correct tuning means everything. Notice that in contrast to my recent video about how the transmission line helps determine the resistive value of a dipole, that's with the transmission line connecting there and coming down. This is with the transmission line not going down, going sideways in line. So there's no or minimal coupling with the antenna wire. That isolates the wire so it acts pretty much just by itself. And now I'm going to explain to you the big proof I was after with this NFED, which takes all of the electrical engineering science and throws it under the bus along with all of amateur radio antenna theory under the bus. 
and that is the fallacy that antennas are electrical devices that have current, and they aren't. And the big purpose for this experiment was the following. Left, transmission line, energy coming up, 50 ohm line. It must connect to a 50 ohm input on the left side of the MN matching network. And I showed you video proof that it was 50, so close to 50 and no reactants, it isn't worth talking about. On paper, after adjusting the matching network, <clears throat> bringing the stuff inside, doing measurements, documenting it, I calculated the output image which implies what would what would be looking at the end of the antenna. On the output of the matching network, which is on the left, inputs on the, I'm sorry, the inputs on the left, the outputs on the right. The right is where the wire was. And see the dashed line, the question mark? Well, the calculations, which are fairly simple, prove that the coax looks into an R50 input image but there is no output image. There is nothing electrical beyond the matching network. The antenna wire does not exist. This is impossible under electrical theory. The matching network is what's known as a Foster's network. It uses reactive things and you do circuit network calculations to calculate the input and output resistive values. In this antenna, there is no output resistive value. It's a dead short. It's purely reactive, and that contradicts the entire electrical physics book because this is an antenna, and it did radiate half watt to Puerto Rico. But an image which is purely reactive will just reflect all the energy, and it wasn't being reflected. This goes to show that the quantum called quantum electrodynamics, the QED nature of antennas. They are not circuits, and any attempt to represent or calculate them as circuits will fail. So this is a jaw-dropping proof, and this is why I built this kludge. It took me a week and a half just to get it matched, but it was worth it because it's a proof that antennas are not electrical. So think on that for a while. Give you a, give your brain a stretch. KBYP did it, and uh, look on uh, eighteen oh seventy nine for that uh, DX on that atoll. So uh, did it.